Let me go back to the possible impact of air pollution in cam on, ca on camels or in camels. All right. This is how you should be doing a study. You have a baseline condition, current air quality without the project. You have a treatment condition, air quality with project. Ch there's a change, if you see a change in the air quality, then you, that impacts the population, the exposed population, which causes health impacts, and leads basically to economists, to what they call monetary value, cost of health. It's all a risk, by the way. Okay, remember that graph? I'm bringing it back. I'm bringing it back because I need it, because I want to show you the health impact effect. So, we, we said basically that if this increases by one microgram, the incidence will increase, the incidence of pre-mortality incidence will increase by 1.4%. Take that and we're gonna put it into the health impact function. I'll come back. So health impact. This is the health impact function. It says basically that that's the 1.4 in there. Don't worry about where it come, came from, but I need to show it to you because the, that, that variable here, delta Y, is the number of premature deaths. Depends proportionally, proportionately positively to the exposed population. This is the change in particular matter. If, if, this, if I put a zero in there, then delta Y will be zero. If I put a positive number in there, then this will be positive. And if I put a negative number in there, in other words, we reduce it, we'll get less deaths, premature deaths. This is the baseline incidence because we have to start from somewhere. And this is the population. Now, it's very critical that you understand. Population is proportional to the number of premature deaths. It's extremely important that you understand that. Okay, I'll come back to it. And there's other impacts that you can use this function to estimate. But you need different incidence rates and you need different uh, uh, coefficients for that beta. All right, let's go to cameras. Let's, uh, dump a little bit of, uh, let's dump a little bit of PM. Exposed population in 2011, 87,650. That goes in there. If the math is too complicated, ask your children to do it. They'll do it. <laughs> and there's no model that I used, scientific model I used. Basic stuff. I didn't spend a lot of money, $20,000, $30,000 to buy a computer model to tell me these things. Mortality rate per year, 0.89 of a percent. That goes in there. So it's about uh, seven, uh, 777 uh, deaths that occur, some of them prematurely, some of them uh, because it's time for them to go, etc. right? Now, I'm gonna change PM by one, right? And everything else, I know them. That's a, the other one, this is, a, this is a 0.014, came from the, from the epidemiological studies, okay? And then I'm gonna get premature deaths per year. How many do you think? Risk. Again, it's a risk. Okay? It may not happen. But is, your community, uh, is, is our community willing to take that risk? Is the question that you have to ask yourselves. Risk of 11 extra premature deaths every year in Kamloops. It's the same value that the Kamloops physicians for a healthy environment came up, we're, we're talking about. And I'm pretty happy that I got the same number too. All right, let's go back in time. Kamloops, 1961, I'm bringing 1961, that's when I was born. And I wanna thank uh, the lifelong seniors of Kamloops that told me that the exposed population, the population really wasn't 10,000 because I had 10,000, but 20,000. They corrected me there. So the exposed population was only 20,000. The mortality rate, I can use the Canadian figure, 0.77 of a percent. Let's increase the PM then at one. By the way, 1961, 1961 we had no clue of these functions. <sighs> but suppose that we knew them. The number of premature deaths then is the risk of extra two deaths from the increased air pollution. And I, was, I wasn't here, today the risk is 11 extra deaths. Also the value of a statistical life then was probably a lot lower <laughs> than it is now because we have, our standard of living has gone up. Therefore the 
impact should not, the, the health cost will not be as big. And this is a risk again. And there was no Aberdeen uh, from, from, what, from what I hear, and there was no Sakhali. Had the mine gone, there was, I'm not sure if there was an environmental review process at that time, maybe there was one. But had the mine gone there, then, every, was Domtar around? No. All that area of Domtar would be built with houses, probably. It would have transformed Kamloops. Probably. All right. So my prediction is towns with small populations will be located closer to open pit mines compared to towns with larger populations. And it has to do with this health impact effect. Somehow, naturally, you'll see small towns close to open pit, mine, open pit mines. Larger towns stay further away. Capitals, they stay even further away. I haven't figured that out, but I will soon. I'll tell you why. So what is the scientific evidence? Why don't we take a tour around the world? Are you with me? Are you tired? This part's good. Okay. All right. I'll keep going. Uh, there's one here. Oh, there's a town right here. It's in Russia. It's, all, uh, it's a man-made uh, town. It's for the workers. And it's a diamond. Well, we know all that. That's Salt Lake City. And uh, this is Kalgoorlie in Australia. Uh, this is ongoing research that I'm doing with a, a student of mine and with a, a few colleagues here. Okay? So I said, let me go see what's happening in the world. Where are these mines located? So I went to this site called uh, www.infomine.com, and they list the mines, as many as the, I guess, the big ones. They won't list the small ones. Here's what I found. Australia, there were open pit mines only. There were 31. Oh, again, this graph. Remember that graph? But this is for a different story. This is the population of closest towns to open pit mines. So this, this is very, very small towns, like my mother's in, the, in Greece. There are about 300 people, I guess, or something like that, uh, in a nice little village. This is a 5,000, uh, uh, population of 5,000, population of 10,000, population of 15,000, 25,000, and 32,000. Here is uh, Kal Kalgoorlie. Right? You can see basically that there's a lot more number of towns that are, that are closer, that are smaller, which are closer to the open pit mine. But as the population increases, they go f and stay further away, or the mine develops further away. I don't know which one starts from the exposed population. Right? This is in Australia. I have the second closest towns also. But uh, it's for future research. But I'm extending that line because there's some. Because it's, what's, what, what's that one there? <laughs> Ninety thousand. We are an outlier in Australia. The probability that you will observe something like that in Camus or more extreme, or more extreme in Australia, is one chance in 23 million. <laughs> the odds of winning the 649 is one in 13 million. <laughs> ah, fool. All right, USA. Same, same observation. Here we go. A lot of small towns, uh, quite frequent, cl uh, close to open pit mines. As the population of the closest town rises, Less and less and less and less. Oop, what's this one here? By the way, I have the averages here, right? Uh, so the average population size is 16,000. The median population size is 9,000. 9, 9, and there's a uh, number of towns is 19 here. Uh, that one is basically West Jordan, Salt Lake County. Mine is six, even that one, mine is 16 kilometers away. And the mine was there from 1850. Uh, well, we're unique. All right, there's Salt Lake City. No, no, this West Jordan. Salt Lake City is 32 kilometers away. Uh, and this West, West Jordan. So it kind of uh, developed. And uh, actually, it's not the biggest employer. It's not even, not even an, 
a big employer anyway anymore. Uh, they have a very diversified economy and they moved away from mining. But here you can see that the, 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 about here you can't see the city moving forward anymore. And that's about, I would say, about five to eight kilometers or so. But anyway, but that's what the, the price they pay. And it's one of the worst cities in the U.S. in terms of particulate matter. Let me go to Canada. Same thing. Williams, the same thing. Small towns, very close to open pit mines. Don't forget the health impact. It's proportional to the population. The, the higher the population is, the higher the health impact is. For the same change in particular matter. Because we are more. They have a place, the mines. This is the wrong place here. Williams Lake, Gibraltar, mine is 60 kilometers away. Timmins, mine is in the city, 43,000. Fort McMurray, oil sands, 70, 40, 35 kilometers away. What's the second, high, second closest city? Edmonton, 500 kilometers away. And there's us. We're an outlier. Let me go, <laughs> let me put the whole world <laughs> under developed countries. Brazil, Chile, Peru. This is what you see. Small towns close to open pit mines. Bigger the towns, the less frequent you see them. And there are some extreme ones here. You want to see you want to know which ones they are? Brazil. Azul Magnesi. Population 140,000 kilometers from mine, 74 kilometers from the mine. El Abra Copper Mine, Calama, Chile, population 147, kilometers from mine 59. Yanacoca Gold Mine, Peru, 300,000 population, kilometers from mine 19. Andofagosta, Chile, Escondida Copper Mine, population 300. If you ask me, copper, what was in mining in general in the, uh, about a year ago, I would say, mm, I know a little bit about it. I have some at home, at home. That's about it. It's not my area of expertise. It wasn't my area of expertise. 151 kilometers. And there's one that I found that is bigger than Kamloops, and it's three kilometers from the mine. I will not click there. I don't want you to see what I saw. All right. I'm going to skip this uh, for the issue of brevity. Uh, but uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me skip this one for this. What I have here is basically, I have the, let me do it, let me do it. I have to do it. Sorry. I spend so much time uh, with my student doing this research. Uh, this shows you basically the population of closest and second closest towns. So we got the second closest towns. And they had, on average, they were bigger populations. And here's the distance in kilometers from the towns. And I logged it because it's exponential. The distribution, don't worry about that. It's just math. But you can all fit a line that goes through the, the best fit line, as I say. It kind of reminds me of the epidemiological studies, the same way. You can find a case where you know, things are uh, pretty good or a lot more die. But on average, so many will die. Well, the same thing here. This is the average relationship. It says basically the, the, the higher the population is, the further away they stay, or the, the further away they are. I don't know which one comes first. All right, what is Kamloops? Kamloops is at 11.3 in the log scale because it has 87,000 population, and 87,000 population will lie between 10 and 12 here in the log scale. So it, it will be about there. So what does this predict? There's about 300 observations here around the world. That would predict basically that the distance predicted should be about 70 kilometers. And at a minimum 10. If you look at Canada, uh, if you look at Australia, Canada, and the US, not the whole world because it included Ghana, et cetera, then you'll, you're, the distance predicted is 128. At a minimum 25 kilometers away. So Highland Valley Copper is okay. It's far away. New gold is an oddity. 